Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 1st of February and today we're back into Daniel chapter 3 the three friends Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and the fiery furnace and we're looking at verses 8 to 12 today. So let's read together, let's find out more about faith and how faith can be put in God and how we can accept the outcome of our faith. Why put your trust in God is the question we're asking all week. So verse 8, therefore at that time certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. So what is happening here with this statue being erected and the people having to bow down? We've already noted that it wouldn't have happened suddenly and come out of the blue. There would have been a large construction process involved and therefore the days ticked down until eventually the statue was unveiled and everyone was gathered round. So Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had plenty of time to decide and to work out what they were going to do. And as we'll discover, well, there really was no decision for them to make. It was quite clear for them the way that they could not bow down and they would not accept the statue. The Jews know not to bow down and worship an idol. After all, it's part of those commandments that have been given to Moses on Sinai. And whenever Moses came down from Mount Sinai, there was the golden calf standing. And he, he smashed the tablets because of his anger at how the people had forgotten God in that short space of time of him going up the mountain. And so that commandment still stands as uh, the, stat the golden statue is erected in the plain of Jura. And now the three friends decide that they're the ones who are not going to bow down. The accusation is brought by some of the Chaldeans about the Jews. And notice here that they are targeting all the Jews, even though it's just Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who are going to be punished for this. As we read on in verse 9, they declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. And it's this flattery that they're bringing before the king again. They're declaring that the king is great. They're worshipping the king and therefore they're quite happy to worship an idol as well. Verse 10, you, king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigger, and harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Note again the repetition of all the musical instruments. This is not just something that happens, it's organized. All of the instruments are brought together. We're not sure what the sound would be like. It might have been a pleasing sound. It might just have been a racket, a noise for people to hear and for people then to, to come and to bow down before the statue. But they want to remind the king that it's his decision. And therefore, anyone choosing not to obey it is really insulting the king and his wisdom and his plan. You, O oh king, have made a decree. So reminding Nebuchadnezzar that he's the one who's in charge here and these people are threatening his authority. And again, we're not told why Daniel's not mentioned here, but whatever he's doing, he's not involved. So then verses 11 and 12. And whoever, again reminding Nebuchadnezzar about the punishment then that he'd set in place, just in case there was going to be any doubt, they're setting all of this up before they mention the individuals who are concerned, just to make sure that the king is on board with his threat and about carrying out that threat. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews and now they're being more specific. They're honing in on the three friends whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Perhaps there was some sour grapes here that these three individuals have been appointed to this high position. Whenever there were other much more qualified people, perhaps, 
who had been living in Babylon for some time. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had overtaken them all because of the way that Daniel had been able to interpret the dreams. So now they're getting their own back on them. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they are named before the king. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. Now, notice the way now that the description is being twisted. Because Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego did pay attention to the king. They obeyed the king. They were his officials. They carried out his decrees. There was no hint of disloyalty from them. But because of this one thing of not bowing down before the statue, they're now being accused of paying no attention to the king. They do not serve your God. So it's not a matter of them not serving Nebuchadnezzar, but it's his gods they're not serving. Or worship the the golden image. And don't just stop there. They've got to add this last little bit that you have set up. So they're really trying to make this personal. That this is an attack by these three Jews on the government of the day. And on the structures of the day. And on the, the people of Babylon as well. They're not accepting their culture. And that's what we can find today, that whenever we try to take a stand for God and whenever we don't accept the ways of the world, the accusation can be made that we are trying to to put others down, that we're attacking others, when in fact we're simply trying to uphold the honour of God and, and worship God and do what's right in his sight. But that can get twisted so easily. And all of a sudden we're in the middle of an attack on this group and that group. And the worship of Almighty God almost gets lost in the argument. So let's bow together in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for your word. And we thank you for all that you teach us. And Lord, we realise how difficult it is in today's world to make a stand for you, to uphold your word and obey it. And yet here we have three friends who hundreds of years ago were in the same position, in perhaps an even worse position where their very lives were being threatened because they would not bow down to others. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to have the courage to trust in you and rely upon you and not to buy and accept the things of others, Lord, but to only accept you and your will. So Lord, help us today in whatever we are going to be doing to make a stand for you, to be honest in all of our dealings, to treat others with respect and integrity and to be witnesses for you and for your kingdom. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.